everyone, welcome back to my channel. A massive thank you if you're brand new here and if you haven't already to make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to make sure you see when another video is posted. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you could become my Patreon. It helps me make more of these videos. All the details are in the description. Today, I've come to Cromer on the North Norfolk coast on what is, I think it's the hottest day of the year. It Well, actually it's 27, 28 degrees inland. Here on the coast, it's a pleasant 23. And as you can see in the distance, the world famous Chroma Pier, which um, I don't know whether it's open. If it is open, we'll go for a walk on there. We're gonna go for a walk along the beach in the town. But before we do that, a little bit of history. This is pretty new up here and it tells you a little bit of history about Chroma. And more importantly, about how Chroma used to be attached to the rest of Europe. We're talking Doggerland. And, you know, it is really fascinating, the fact that uh, East Anglia used to be part of the rest of Europe. You can just clearly see here, and then the ice caps obviously melted after the last ice age, and there's been relics of woolly mammoths and, and all these kind of animals that have been found, uh, their bones under the water. This is a real, I tell you what, if you come up here, what a lovely place for a picnic. If I just step on this table, which I know isn't very PC, Again, you can see the beach further on. Now, further up there is Sheringham, which we'll be doing next week. So make sure, if you're a big fan of Sheringham, or if you've never been to Sheringham, to check it out. So as we start the tour up here, um, on a little putting green, you will see all the way along here, actually, there's some uh, really beautiful little gardens that you can have a walk around. Um, if you like your pitch and putt. Cafe up here as well. Quite nice to go and have a round. Although... Oh yeah, mind you, it goes, I thought this was just it actually, but it does continue further on. So somewhere out there, obviously, is what used to be Doggerland. Sounds completely rude. But um, yeah, fascinating fossils have been found on the beach here in Cromer. Back in the Victorian era, it was the place to be seen and actually to have a second home as well. So a lot of aristocrats and a lot of rich people used to come to Chroma back in the day. Not that they don't now, but you can see from the architecture that is still here and some of the fancy hotels, including one hotel, which wouldn't be out of place in Monte Carlo. So all the gardens are up here. We'll come to some of those in just a second. You see when it's low tide, actually, how much of the, uh, the rocks are exposed here on the beach. Some beach huts down there. I think they've been added rather recently, actually. A little fun fair down there for the kids. Well, I say fun fair, it's a slippery dip and a place to get a coffee and a little adventure area there. And just here sometimes you, uh, I haven't seen them for a few years actually, you might see some goats grazing on the cliff top here. It's pretty steep, but um, yeah, apparently they love it. So yeah, these are really lovely and pretty to come down to um, whilst you're here in Cromer. If you like flowers and like walking through here, it's very calming, although that could uh, be cleaned out a little bit. I love these little uh, rivers that go through it. Just really little pretty places to come and have a sit down. So you'll know that Chroma is famous for its crabs just over here where the, uh, the pitch and putt is, which is quite recently new. Uh, just behind it is a nice big green and that's the place every year where they have the Crab and Lobster Festival here in Cromer, showcasing the best um, lobster and crab that they get off these waters. You might be able to see people on the end there literally um, doing a little bit of crabbing. And if you do fancy coming down to Cromer to getting yourself some crabs, I will show you one of the best places, or my favourite places, to go to. Now, just before we go into the town, I'm going to head down just here for a second. And here we are down at the, uh, the main seafront area of Cromer. Just over there is the pier, as you can see. And you'll see all of this has been redone in the last few years as well. Um, Chrome has suffered pretty badly actually with a, uh, a couple of really bad storm surges which uh, pretty much broke a lot of this wall. So it's, it's really nice to see that it's been redone and let's hope it will uh, withstand a few more 
winter storms as well. Just beautiful today. And I mean, you can clearly see just how clear the water is here. I think it was last year, a local diver um, did some footage of what was underneath the sea here. And you would have thought the North Sea would be gross and dirty, but actually it was teeming with life. Obviously lobsters and, uh, and crabs crawling around and loads of seagrass. You would have thought it was abroad or somewhere like that. Um, just through there as well, I don't know if you can see it, but there's uh, some people trying surfing there. There's a surf school, we'll come to that in just a sec. So there are many places to go and get your crabs in Cromer. Um, mine definitely is this tiny little cottage here um, that sells cockles, it sells crabs, dress Cromer crabs as well, and the amazing local lobsters. Great little bookshop there. Look at that, how tiny that is. So you can just see at the top there, it's a very famous hotel here in Cromer. So built originally as a summer residence for Lord Suffield, it became a hotel when it was purchased by Perrier Le Francoise back in 1830. It was extensively redesigned by George Skipper back in 1894 in a French style. Guests have included Oscar Wilde, the Prince of Wales, and did you know the actor Stephen Fry? He worked here as a waiter. And in the shadow of the Hotel de Paris is the world famous Chroma Pier which is actually open today, which I didn't think it would be. So uh, we're gonna go and have a walk on there. Again, as we just overlook here towards Overstrand, which is just beautiful. Now they've got a nice view. Just before we go on to the pier, as always, flip flops off, we're gonna go and check out the water. As we come up here to the surf school, in fact, actually, they're selling some second-hand uh, stand-up paddle boards. So it was much bigger than you think. Or they're renting them. I think they're renting them. You can even do this at the weekends as well through the winter. If you ever do try it and you go on the beach, these are a good idea. So your feet don't get um, hurt with the pebbles. Glad to say the lifeguard's back on the beach here in Cromer. It's always really good as well. They always tell you the temperature of the air and of the water. It gets up to around about 18 degrees um, in the summer and um, slightly warmer where there's uh, shallow water, but uh, 14 degrees, I think a lot of people probably say, yeah, I'll give that a miss. But you know, when you just go a little bit in, it's not too bad. Let's go and feel it. Flip flops are off. Don't look at my flip flops. I've got some paint on them. This is what is so good about Norfolk beaches pristine, beautiful. And I have to say, you get some amazing sunset photos when the sun sets just underneath the pier here in the summer. It don't feel too cold, it feels gorgeous. See some people out there doing their paddle boarding. And if you fancy going to check out the, uh, the history of the lifeboats here in Cromer, the RNLI Museum and Cafe is just over there. Now I don't know why, but um, there is something that I love about going underneath the pier. I always find it so fascinating and the glimpses that you have as well um, through the, uh, the metal railings, through towards the sea. Seeing just in all the and just looking at all the barnacles and the bits of seaweed just hanging off. In fact, um, there's a few mussels down here, look. It does remind me of Blackpool, actually, being under Chroma Pier. There is something about it. Uh, it reminds me of Western Supermare, very similar piers.
So we come to the famous chroma pier. It's been used in loads of TV shows and movies in the past. There's been a jetty or pier here dating back since 1846. It's been ravaged by gales and dismantled in the past. And also, it is very haunted. Over the years, people have seen ghostly figures here in and around the pier. And apparently lost cries of old sailors can be heard at night as they emerge from the sea from their watery graves. Apparently this place is so haunted that there's said to have been reports of unexplained ghostly activity as far back as the 1300s. And definitely worth a visit on New Year's Day night, uh, a free firework display that is always done from the end of Chroma Pier. Thousands of people arrive to see this, so if you do want to come, make sure you get a spot early on in the evening. So in the distance there you can see East and West Runton, um, also Sheringham further around the corner. Looks like they're doing some, uh, some work on the pier at the moment. And of course this building, very famous where they launched the lifeboats from here in Cromer as well. And a fantastic kind of museum where you can walk around and see some of the rich heritage and history and also check out some of the boats. It's normally free to go in but obviously as coronavirus is still happening it is currently shut. So you can see in the distance over there where it goes really sandy, that is Overstrand. I had a lot of people message me on social media saying, if you go into Chroma this week, make sure you take a trip to Overstrand. So I did. So I parked up on the car park, walked along the cliff through all the brambles, and I came to this amazing view. And now by far one of my favorite beaches here on the East Coast. In the distance, you can see Chroma Pier. This place is definitely worth a visit if you're en route to Chroma. Absolutely beautiful, right? Okay, so let's continue the tour. We're gonna to come off the pier now and we're gonna head into Chroma Town. So just behind the seafront, of course, is Chroma Town. Leading up to the town, there's loads of little boutique shops, uh, a great place to go and get yourself some cream teas here. You're not sure of fish and chip shops as well. This one on the right always seems to get big queues. And standing over the town proudly is Chroma Church. Again, if you're into history, it's definitely worth taking a visit inside. And just coming down to this end of the beach, just right outside the, uh, the museum, it's hard to believe that these tractors actually still work putting the boats, but yeah, they certainly do. I think the sea salt has uh, definitely taken its toll. They're like vintage tractors just lined up. There's even more up there. Just walking further up from the museum, you come to uh, to these. Not beach huts, but beach chalets um, that you can hire here on the beach. I mean, they've got just a kitchen in them. Pretty much, that's it. But uh, something different to a beach hut. Can I ask what you're painting? <laughs> Are you a local artist? Yes, I am. I've never seen anyone painting on the beach before. I thought it was pretty amazing. Old school. It is old school. It is old school. So that was Chroma. A massive thank you for watching the video as always. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share the video. You can support me on Patreon. The details are in the description. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you have never been to Chroma, make sure you put it on your list on a gorgeous day like today. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'll see you next time.